Hello nature lovers, welcome to another exciting episode of Environmental Systems and Societies. Today's video is all about feedback and feedback loops. What is a feedback loop? Well, it's how we measure the effects of an input on a system's equilibrium. And this input, sometimes called information, can affect the system in one of two ways. It can either cause the system to be main the equilibrium of the system to be maintained, or it can cause it to shift and change. So what are some examples of feedback? Well, if you're hungry, you've got a choice. You can eat and not be hungry anymore, or you can not eat and continue being hungry. It's one of the two, okay? Here's another example. If you feel cold, you can put on more clothes, or you can turn up the heat, and that will make you feel warmer, or you don't have to put on any more clothes, you'll still feel cold, okay? Now, we look at this as either negative feedback or positive feedback loops. And really, this is whether or not the equilibrium stays constant or shifts. If it stays constant, we call that a negative feedback loop. And I know it seems the opposite, but if it stays the same, it's a negative feedback loop. So here's an example. In your house, you get cold. You set the thermostat for a certain degree. When the house falls below that, then the furnace kicks on and warms the house back up to the original equilibrium. That's a negative feedback loop, okay? Um, here's another one. If your body starts to rise above 98 degrees because you're out in the sun and you're walking and exercising, well, a whole bunch of physiological things happen. Uh, the blood vessels in your skin start to get bigger and they rise up to the surface of the skin, letting all that heat out which then a combination of the sweating which evaporates out which takes some of the heat with that water vapor that makes you feel cooler and returns your body to the original uh, equilibrium now positive feedback is the opposite in this case the equilibrium actually shifts to a new place so here's a sad example you're lost on a snowy mountain and your body senses that it's starting to cool down so it starts to shiver but you're way up here on everest climbing and so it's starting to get harder and harder for you to move. You're slowing down. There's less oxygen. Now the enzymes aren't working well because your body temperature is dropping. So you're moving slower. You're more lethargic and slow. And so it's a new equilibrium now and everything's working even slower. And so there's less body heat. And if you're not rescued, unfortunately, this is your solution. Yeah, death. Another one is global warming. So the high temperatures that are happening on the planet cause a lot of this water to evaporate as water vapor. Well, it turns out water vapor is a greenhouse gas, so it leads to more uh, heat being trapped on the planet, and that heat causes it to go up higher, which causes uh, a, a warmer global temperature and less ice, and so more water can evaporate, and this cycle can keep going, getting warmer and warmer and warmer, and animals that depend on the ice are in bad shape. One last example is uh, poverty. If you take poverty, unfortunately people in poverty often have uh, low levels of education, they have poor hygiene, they have poor knowledge of contraception, so they have more babies. More of these babies are brought in the same way, uneducated, underfed, but they have babies and it keeps increasing the numbers of poverty. Now I know all these seem like really sad examples and the truth is, is a lot of times positive feedback is a bad thing. We typically like our status quo. We like negative feedback. But here's a happy example. Let's take this, uh, this trash heap here. These people saw it, they were disgusted by it, so they, they adopt a street, they start picking up trash. Their friends go and they, they take a part of a stream and they pick all the trash and tires out of the stream. The new, new equilibrium is this really nice park, this really nice trail that used to be trash and now it's nice. All right, so there you go, now you understand it. Here's a quiz. The Hudson Bay Trading Company in Northern Canada, they used to collect the skins, the pelts, for a hundred years of these Canadian lynxes and the snowshoe hares. Now the interesting thing is, the only thing that eats snowshoe hares up there are the Canadian lynxes, and the only thing the Canadian lynx eats are the snowshoe hares. So they got really good data about how many numbers of each there were. And they assumed there was enough food for the snowshoe hare, and they assumed that nothing else was killing them. And when they put this together, they came up with this graph. Now I highly recommend that you pause the graph once the whole thing's visible here, and look at it. And my quiz question is, 
what kind of feedback system is this and why so it's not enough to go positive dude <laughs> negative i mean negative and then uh and then not know why you have to be able to tell me why if you can do that successfully and we'll talk in class about it then uh bully for you but if not then let me know i hope this was clear but if it's not let me know peace out homie